Hello and welcome everybody to this week's video analysis and today we keep it short, simple and interesting. Interesting as usual I hope, but short and simple as a new approach to make the videos easier to watch. All right, Colin Hay sent me his footage and he said it was new to the single. Do you realize something? It's snow, it's cold, the water can't be much above freezing temperature. Brave young man. 20 years old, from the US as I suppose, I might be mistaken though. And Colin says he usually does sweep rowing new to single sculling. He says there are probably a lot of issues and no, no, I don't think so. I think Colin, you scull pretty well, remarkably well, for somebody who hasn't taken up sculling too long ago. But there is one major issue that you share with 99%, 90% of all rowers whom I see and whom I help. And this issue is the only issue I would like to address today and talk to you, ladies and gents, watching this video, because it's very likely that you're gonna make a very similar mistake and I'm gonna show you what the effect is and how to change it. <laughs> What I'm referring to is how you reach the catch position. It is not important that you catch it super long, but it is important that you do not compromise on your body position. That's the most important thing. Being a little longer or shorter doesn't make that much of a difference. In my opinion, it doesn't make any difference. But setting up the body well, that's the most important thing. And this is usually priority B. And with some boats, it's even priority zero. But this is the most important thing. Let me explain what I mean. If you go forward now, so let's do a full drive. Okay, good. By the way, that finished position, Colin, hey, beautiful. Everybody, have a look. The shoulders are not all the way in the back. The elbows and hands at about the same height. It's just um, feathered the blades. I mean, it can't get any better. I love that position. Nice, nice um, tension between the chest bone and the foot stretchers. It's just the way everything's set up. Beautiful. I really like that. Back to the topic though. And as you go forward, there is one main objective and various ways to reach it. And the main objective is that at the catch, you want to be in a position where you can always let go of your oar handles. And the reason is a very simple one if we go into um, body dynamics and, and anthropometrics and how the body reacts. You can, you can do this yourself. It's a very simple test. Um, hold on to something and, and push something forward. So um, get a door handle or um, get a shopping cart or whatever, whatever you have available. Just try to push something away from you. Try to reverse that into a pull as rapidly as you can. And it's very difficult to take a stopwatch without a camera, a sophisticated system and so on. But it's very likely this is going to be more than half a second to a full second. And the next problem is that if you push really hard with your entire body, it's very likely that you will fall onto the object you're trying to push. And by this, I simply mean that you use the object you're trying to push away to sustain a bit of your upper body weight. So you lean onto it. Let's use this pallet mover right here. So let's say I lean onto something. So I wanna push it from my body forward. And the further I go, the more weight of my upper body is going to rest on the pallet mover's hand. Now the problem is that when I put all of my weight in my force to bring my hands further forward, it's very difficult to pull. In order to pull, I have to get more load on my feet. There's no other way. So what happens at the catch is that you go forward, and actually now you should be pulling, but you're still with all your weight on your hands. So what do you have to do? This. Or this, you shorten the lever. But what you should be able to do is approach in a way that you do push forward, but more with the palm of your hands, so that any time you want, you can do this. Because then you can pull rapidly. And this is precisely call it what you are doing and what many, many other athletes are doing as well. When you go forward to the catch, the, you try to go further forward, but trying to bring the upper body at a very late stage farther forward, which means you pivot farther forward and therefore 
you lean your body weight onto your oar handles. Now this has a pretty bad effect and let's move forward one stroke so you can see the blades. If you fall forward and you push the oar handles forward and your upper body weight is being sustained by the oar handles, it means nothing but the blades have to go up. And this is exactly what they do. Now some coaches may say, bring your blades to the water and you don't change the upper body motion, then it is almost impossible. So the root of the problem is that you distribute your body weight in a way where you actually fall forward. Now the solution is not to stop leaning forward because a forward lean per se is not bad. The question is how you do it and most importantly, when do you do it? Now the when is an often discussed issue. Should, should I emphasize more the problems and, and what the results are? I, I think I better do. Let's spend another minute or two explaining why you shouldn't fall onto your oar handles, why it is not effective that your blades go up instead of going down, and then I will elaborate how to change it, okay? So, step number one. Why is it bad that your blades are off the water? See, um, if you just watch the correlation between the seat speed, so just watch the motion of his seat, and the motion of the torso. Let me draw lines here, it's easier to grasp. Let's pick the color green, I think. Should be a nice contrast. By the way, if anybody wants to know, um, the software I'm using is called Epic Pen. I'm not making any money of that. Um, they don't have an affiliate program, but it's, it's, it's a nice drawing software. There may be others, this is the one I found, it works. Okay, so it's the relation between the upper body, which is actually in a good, Posture is nice, it's not super bent, it's quite stable. The seat and of course the hands, but this is what we're gonna look at a little later. Now, as he moves forward, as you move forward, Colin, you see that there's a lot of time wasted where your seat does not move. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you probably know my idea of what the seat should actually do. In my humble opinion, nothing active. Instead of you sliding forward, you should be sitting still and play with the boat. So for me, the seat, it comes with wheels so that the boat can travel underneath your body mass. Not so much that you slide back and forth in that shell, because this is gonna interrupt the boat flow eventually. You know, no matter how smooth and careful you are, this, this can never work. Colin's main problem is that at the catch, when he wants to catch, or Colin, when you want to catch and start the drive, you have to wait. You have to wait for a very long time before you can actually start to propel. There's another problem connected to this. Let's just watch this for a moment. See how long it takes at the catch? It's out of flow. It's not within the rhythm. And you have to keep in mind that this is happening at a stroke rate. What's that? 16 to 18. And still, if you check the catch, there's almost a momentary pause or a stop. But there is no need to make a pause or a stop. All you should be doing is um, changing from pulling the boat underneath yourself to driving the boat forward with means of a lever so you're still going the right direction. And that stop usually interrupts boat flow. And that boat flow interruption costs you a lot of speed and time. Now imagine this, if it was stroke rate 30, 35, um, you do this in a 2K for about 200, 250 times. You master's rowers, you do it 100, 150 times in a 1K race. So this is gonna cost you a lot of time and it makes you tired because you have to stop your own body mass because you slide forward. You shouldn't do this. So the second problem connected to this is the way you then enter the water. So your blades usually follow what the rest of the body does. And if the body doesn't adapt to what the blade prescribes, is probably the wrong word, what the blade dictates. So if you don't adapt your body motion to the boat motion, um, you end up with a blade motion that looks about like Colin's. And this is not because Colin is, 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 uh, Colin is unexperienced. I think he rows very well. The problem is that there is too much wrong tension within the trunk. And the wrong tension I refer to is the pulling forward, leaning onto something. And the leaning onto something 
you can't really pull on something and lean onto something. It's not possible. So if you push like a shopping cart forward, next time you go shopping, try it out. Um, you push something forward, you lean onto the shopping cart, and then what do you need to do? You can't just move your butt out. No, very likely you're going to remove the upper body weight from it. So you will do this motion. So of course, of course. Good. But if you do this in the boat, it's not so good. Because see what happens? The upper body pivots with the catch. Very well visible. Now, this has two downsides, two major downsides. First of all, there is no blade control. So the blade takes too long to connect in the water. If the blade moves down in the water, um, there is never that point of time where a water bubble can actually form in front of the blade, which you use as an, as an anchor and propel yourself past that water anchor. So as the blade is moving down, 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 it can never really grab the water, to put it that way. It's not scientific, what I say right now, but systematically speaking, this is pretty much what's happening. Therefore, it takes you a long time to connect. Secondly, the way you move your body now is not efficient, and it can't be. If you are in a place where you pivot upward, which muscles do you have to contract to pivot upward? But well, first of all, you have to get a rotation around the hip. If you want a rotation around the hip, you have to activate not just the lower back muscles, but also the upper torso muscles in the back. And at the beginning of the drive, you want to be very careful with the amount of um, leg power you're using. Now, if you use leg power there, basically, uh, yeah, the, it should be the quadriceps, sort of the front part of your leg muscles, which should be mostly engaged. Um, however, at the beginning of the drive, and then we have to free ourselves from the conception that we basically move back in the boat. We want to pull, we want to push the boat gently in that element of water and nothing in the water works dynamically and quickly you know except a couple of very very rare um, fish species but this this boat shell is a displacer the way it is constructed so it's basically like any container ship and if you apply too much leg power at the catch on top of you falling onto your oar handles having to get having to reduce your upper body weight and therefore lift your upper body this is a negative cycle which is usually supported by an excess of quadriceps work and at that point of the stroke all you want to do is hold the position you don't want to move to i've said this in a different video and somebody posted in a comment um saying aram you have no clue because of course you have to engage the glutes and you have to engage the quads and if you want to move up and if you want to move something of course yeah, you have to do this but if you want to be static and gently move your legs away without your upper body you should be very 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 careful which muscles you're activating now the problem here is that colin you are activating too much of the legs overall speaking the problem is that your upper body moves up too quickly because you are in that reducing weight from the hands motion and as your blades are in that down cycle motion it is very difficult to stabilize the blades throughout the entire drive so what you are very likely to end up with is a washout at the finish so if your problem at the finish is a washout everybody now um, don't look don't don't try to solve this issue at the finish it's not going to work try to solve the issue um at the catch and especially the way you approach the catch but more on that just in a moment good let's delete all the lines here i hope i was clear enough with which muscles to activate all right so let me re-record this or show you the second version of my attempt to explain this issue it's actually not a big deal but i figured i just I just do it all over and again. So if you don't like to see it, just skip the next two to three minutes. If you like to see this, I'm going to explain in more details and in the different way, at least I try to do so, how this problem evolves and how it can be solved. The main problem is that your upper body rests on your oar handles. And you can try it out next time you go shopping. Rest your arms, almost extended, with your upper body weight on that bar of that shopping cart. 
try to push forward, try to support your upper body weight with that shopping cart just to an extent. Then there's only one thing you can possibly do in order to be able to pull it. You have to reduce upper body weight very quickly. Now, the most obvious way is to lift up the upper body. Now, if you lift up the upper body, this is essentially a pivot around the hip. And this is just not what we wanted to catch. So let me show you what's happening here. A lot of weight on your oar handles because you try to get extra reach. And now the only thing you can do is move up your upper body and move around the hip. If you feel like your blade's off the water, don't try to correct your blade work first. Try to correct the way you distribute your upper body weight. The problem about the upper body rotating around the hip at that position is that your blade can never connect with the water. You know, essentially we can row quickly because the blade should sit still in the water, you hold it exactly where it is, and then you drive past that anchor point. So the idea, or my personal idea of how it should work is not that you want to propel the blade through the water. The idea is that you want to keep the blade almost where it is with as little slip as possible and use that as an anchor and drive yourself past that point with the means of levers, the oars. Now, if your blade is consistently traveling deeper and deeper and deeper, you can never really connect and you're already engaged in full leg drive, etc. Now, you cannot really start to drive a little deeper and then stabilize without letting go of some of the force you have applied. And at that point of time, when the legs are in this position, oh, it's so easy to apply a lot of force and it's so easy to overwhelm the torso here. So it's not very likely you will stop the leg drive just for a brief moment. No, you want to do more. You think you can solve the problem by applying more force, which isn't going to work. What you have to do is prepare your body in a different way. And now let me show you how to solve that issue. By the way, at, at the rowing camps we do in Vienna, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be rowing camps again in 2021. Summer camp is going to take place pretty sure, and certainly the September camp. So if you register for the newsletter on rmtraining.com, I will send out the dates probably in the next two, three weeks. Everything, in my opinion, starts at the finish. By the way, quick remark, you see this, Colin? As you enter the water, namely with a deep, round, never connecting catch, the way you exit the water with a washout. See? Besides the fact that your blade is too deep all the time. Yeah. That washout, you cannot correct the washout at the finish, you have to start at the catch. So first of all, at the release, and this is what you're doing correctly, you disconnect your elbows from your upper body. This is well done. You want to make sure that you are disconnecting the hand motion from the vertical rotating shoulder motion. Because the shoulder, it has to move around the hip so that you can go forward. But it's important that your hands don't follow the shoulder motion, but your hands move out, move independently and can stay as level as possible. And in, here in the background, your shoulders are going up and down. You have to separate these two motions on the way forward. As you move further, at that point, there, I see something that I see with many athletes. You're moving the shoulder girdle forward, but you're not moving the most important element of your body forward, namely the lower torso here. So the parts of your trunk that are pretty much the first thing connected to your hip. And this should be flexible. This should be moving forward. The shoulder girdle follows these lower parts. This is something you should throw forward. So it's not important that you go forward here. It is important that you go forward there. And of course, it takes flexibility. And I know people who are 60 who lack flexibility and I know people who are 18 and lack flexibility. This is something you have to practice. You know, it's not God given with most people. 
it's something you have to work on and hip flexibility is crucial in rowing because this is how you generate more speed and you know, stay pain free no matter how healthy the rowing motion is so if we follow your recovery further instead of now supporting start you now you already is half slide you start to support your shoulder girdle weight with the oar handles and the reason why i say this is and i look at your blades your blades are consistently going up they're not so much going up because you need space to square that's a byproduct they're going up because you start to support your upper body weight with your oar handles and why is this happening because you have not used your lower trunk to move forward so basically you cut your upper body in half this part moves forward so the lower section of your trunk is actually not moving forward and as it is not moving forward so there is a bend this part here pushes on your oar handles so supported by the weight here and this part actually should be supporting the weight so instead of your oar handles all of your weight should be on your seat at all time that's important and Colin that's the one thing you should be looking out for on the way forward try to move move out and roll your hip in in these indoor life sessions I do I always call it roll and strive so roll with the hip and strive with the chest bone should you aim for a hollow back no not at all but realistically speaking if you aim for a hollow back you're going to have a somewhat straight back and most importantly a hip that is in the right direction that's that's the essence of everything so let me delete all these lines let's just follow this a bit further and now at that point of the time at, the, at that point of the drive you could still get it right you know a lot of people simply don't have the hip flexibility this is something you can't get overnight so at that point you would have to look for a hollow back so that you you probably have to bring your seat a little back get a little more tension here and also in your abs because you need to stabilize try to bring your seat back but not so much by sliding back but by pushing your hip you know what I mean it's not like you moving back and forth no it's like me moving this way and you want to sit tall from the lower lower trunk and this way you have um, it's, it's half the rent paid that most of your upper body weight rests on your seat and then what always helps is to make sure you don't fully extend your arms it's it's enough to have like three degrees a light bend in your arms your elbows this also makes you quite flexible and insusceptible to waves that's important and you also want to make sure your shoulders are low and relaxed so it's all right to go forward like this and it, it doesn't matter if you are tiny tiny and and, and and super small or very tall if you feel like a hulk a person who is heavy and lethargic it's very likely that you will have your arms the right way if you feel like you have arms of an orangutan you will probably move the right way uh, heavy low and heavy and if you're low and heavy with your shoulders you can't really support that with the oar handles you will more naturally be inclined to do this with your seat and then at the catch you should always be able to let go of the oar handles anytime of course it will be unstable you will fall in the water so you don't want to practice this in cold conditions like this but I've made a couple of videos with Alex where we showed you the basic drills and one of the basic single skull drills or any any rowing drill really is to be at the catch and just put your fingers gently away and get a hold of your oar handles again you can't do this if all your weight is supported here okay so this is the essence to sum this entire video up Colin and everybody watching what you have to do in order to row faster and I don't want to go into details why it makes you faster there's so much so much to talk about but just to sum it up here you have to get rid of most of your upper body weight that affects your oar handles you have to make sure as you approach the catch you don't try to lean forward any further it doesn't get you any longer what you have to do is have uh, light shoulders 
light hands and be in full control of your motion. Okay, ladies and gents, I've left out a lot of things and I could be talking, probably should be talking another hour. But for now, this is the most important message. I hope you benefit. If you want to send me your footage, send it to video at armtraining.com through a YouTube link, a Google Drive link, Dropbox, WeTransfer, but please don't send me footage straight by email. My inbox is going to explode, so don't do that, please. And whenever you send me footage, make sure you send along the permission. So I don't want to ask back and forth, hey, can I get permission for that video? If you want to have a free YouTube video analysis, send me your footage, say, Aram, you have permission to use it on YouTube, everybody else in the video too. If you are under the age of 18, please get permission from your parents. That's important because once I put something online, I don't remove it anymore. I had a couple of cases where I had some youngsters sending me footage and then I had to take it off because their coaches, their parents were not fond of that. So I'm not going to do this anymore. Another thing, I'm going to do a couple videos on training planning. So if you want to send me your questions about training planning specific topics, things you would like to get answered, please send me your questions either to video at armtraining.com, send me your questions by Instagram, or just put them in the comment section below. All right, everybody, I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to meet you in the next indoor live session on Saturday. If you haven't already joined the club, go to armtraining.com live indoor sessions. And I'm looking forward to work with you. Sign up, fill out the program entry questionnaire and join Team Arm Training. Until then, all the best to you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.